in this video, I'll give you three pieces of information that you should know about the items you would typically pull in bottom spots. The formula for this video isn't changing one bit compared to the top and mid spots, at least one thing to do and one thing not to do with each item, and maybe a both do and don't here and there. One way or another, you could appreciate a certain item much more after watching this video. But without further ado, let's start giving her, bud. Just before getting started, if you enjoy this video, consider subscribing. It's free, it helps me out a lot, and you can always change your mind. While the blue shell is one of the most simple items in the game to use, I think it's important to keep a few things in mind before chucking it without second thought. If you play your cards right, you could hit quite a few people in front of you with the blue while it's on the ground. It's not a game-changing hit on a straight, but you could use it on a tight turn to potentially hit people off the track. Again, this won't make or break your team's race, but it could do something. Regardless of whether you're on your own or you're in a 66, never spam the blue unless you're bagging and you know the other team is in first. I think in wars, it's really important to let your team know when you're throwing blue, just so you don't hit anyone unexpectedly. And just in general, you could hit some opponents on the ground as well, so one way or another, there's always something to consider before you think to spam blue. And on top of that, do not chuck blue right away if your team has a mushroom in first. I've talked about this quite a bit already, but there are three key factors to consider before throwing a blue because your team can avoid it. A ghost, a shock, and the remainder of the race, meaning there could be a second blue. You have to consider these factors before you chuck the blue in an instant. While the star doesn't give you much extra speed, it's still a very powerful item nonetheless, and you do not want to take it for granted. Chaining stars into item sets is a pretty solid strategy. At the surface, you know you can get one or two items, and you're given her. But chaining into item sets could also give you a solid chance at predicting shock if the shock user chains into the same set, assuming they're behind you. This is situational, but in most cases, it's not worth it to stop troll with a star. You just won't screw over your opponents hard enough to make it worth your time, and instead should focus on catching up, assuming you're in the back. And alongside all other invincibility items, I'm a big fan of chaining invincibility with another item and a star. Giving yourself an extended period of invincibility can be very powerful, especially if you're predicting shock. I've had it happen so many times where I'd pull, say, a star and a bill, and I use my bill right after my star, and I know I'm going to dodge the shock. And sure enough, I dodge. It's a pretty broken strategy, especially with double items in this game, so I'd highly recommend adapting to it. The bullet bill can be a really good item to get or a really bad item in some situations, but you can work around that if that's the case, and there's a ton of good that comes out of the bill as well. Just like the star, chaining invincibility can really help you out if you have a bill. This is because you'll have around 10 seconds of invincibility, more or less, while in a bill. If you use it on a bill extension, you'll have even more invincibility. Seriously, take advantage of it. It could change the game for you. And speaking of bill extensions, take advantage of those as well. I think this clip speaks for itself. Bill extensions could go a long way to help you perform well in a race. If you aren't familiar with the best bill spots on each track, including the bill extensions, I have my bill strats video in the description, so go check it out if you need to. Now, if you're bagging, pulling a bill probably isn't a good thing unless you're looking to catch up. However, if you don't want your bill, use it shortly after falling off a ledge, and you'll fall off and waste your bill. This isn't always the best option, but if you're, say, going for shock, this is something I'd suggest getting into on a regular basis if the opportunity is there. The shock is the most powerful item in the game, and it is for a reason. It's important that you don't take it for granted, though, and that you use it the best you can, as it can single-handedly win you the race. Chaining your shock into boxes is a great way to help you and screw over your opponents. This is the best way to use the shock in most situations, as you'll essentially double down on the advantage you have over the people in front of you, being that you have items and you aren't shocked, while they don't have items and are shocked. Specifically in Clan Wars, target shocking your opponents on glider sections is a great way to benefit your team. You'll be able to screw over your opponents really hard, so in some cases, this is a much better option than simply shocking your opponents after boxes. Now, you cannot hesitate before using a shock. Things can happen so quickly. The other team gets into dodges. One of your mates pull a golden instead of a star. Or one of your mates gets their dodge stolen. Try not to let the other team's item usage get to you. I'd say if they're in three or more dodges, that's when it's fair to reconsider your shock usage. But you can afford to dodge two of them if you're dodging three or four of you guys, and the non-dodgers are getting shocked into boxes. The point is, do not not hesitate with shock as your original plan will most likely be more beneficial than the plan you will eventually initiate once you are done hesitating with the shock. 
The Golden Mushroom is a bit of a controversial item to pull, as it could either help you a lot or be a complete slap in the face. But for what it's worth, it could help you quite a bit. It's super important to take full advantage of the various Golden Strats if your best option is to catch right up. I have three videos going over the best Golden Strats on the Nitro, Retro, and DLC tracks, respectively. I'll have the link to those in the description. Actually, I'll just put the whole playlist down there, including the Bullet Bill and Star Strats. But yeah, Golden Strats can really work in your favor. Now, you don't always want to use your Golden just to chain into the next set. In some cases, sure, you can do that, but on an off-road track like Dry Dry Desert, you may be more inclined to use your Golden elsewhere to take full advantage of it. And if you're begging for shock, spam your Golden at least once just to get the countdown going. This can really help you if you want to stay at the set you were begging at, or if you realize you need to catch up to the optimal shock distances. Not much else to say here, really. Just make sure you can get shock if you're sacrificing your Goldens, and better yet, your race. The Crazy 8 is one of the most uncommon items in the game, and it's a common strategy to just spam it all away because you don't know what else to do with it. But I can give you some options. Using your Crazy 8 strategically can work out really well in your favor. The best item of the 8 is the Star, so people mainly spam their Crazy 8 to get their Star out. But you also have some solid offensive items, specifically the Red Shell and the Bomb. If you can take advantage of all the items you have, or at least some of them, that could go much further than simply spamming your Crazy 8 to use your Star. It's really important not to expose your crazy eight when you're in a tight pack you don't want someone running into your bomb on a turn or trying to steal your star and actually getting away with it if you have the choice i suggest holding on to whatever item you have in front before exposing your crazy eight although i talked about using your crazy eight strategically and slowly i still think spamming it can be good in some scenarios if you want to chain invincibility then yeah you might want to spam your crazy eight to activate your star as soon as possible again invincibility is really strong in this game and it's so easy for people to take it for granted Lastly, we have the Boo. This item is purely random, as it'll take an item from someone in a higher placement than you. Despite that, you can still use it skillfully. If you aren't sick of me dropping the invincibility card, well, I'm proud of you, because I'm about to do it again. You get 10 seconds of invincibility when you activate your Boo, and if you combine that with, say, a star, the amount of time you can dodge a shock really does add up. So don't take it for granted. If you didn't know, if you use a Boo when you're at first or when no one in front of you has an item, you're guaranteed to pull a mushroom. This can really help you out if you want to dodge a blue while still having a mushroom, or if you want to use it while those in front of you are itemless after a shot. One way or another, using a boo to get a guaranteed mushroom can be very, very helpful. This is mainly for when you only have a boo, but I would not suggest using it right before an item set. You might want to make sure that you actually want to keep the item you steal, so using your boo too late and having to wait until the following set to get rid of the item you stole is never a good thing, so if you have the option, use your ghost in advance. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, the item guide has been completed. While there are still some things to go over, like dealing with certain items or playing around certain items or just awareness in general, this series was meant to go over each item and what you should and shouldn't do with them. So I hope you learned something from watching these videos. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic day and keep on giving her, bud.